is two different types of them out there. Hmm? Now they're similar, but they're different. It's kind of like the difference between dogs and wolves. The ones that are running things up there, the larger ones hunt the smaller ones. It's some kind of blood feud, I guess, been going on for a long time. He's here. Hey guys, what is up? Niat here with Film Comics Explained, and today we'll be taking a look at the Super Predators that were seen in the third installment of the Predator franchise, the 2010 film Predators. The Super Predators are essentially a subspecies of the Yachua that also appear to live on Yachua Prime. They are also larger and heavier than their Predator cousins, standing at a height of at least 8 feet. They noticeably have more of a reptilian appearance, sporting skin that was more scaly and that had a different pigmentation. Their face was also much longer, and their trill was also much deeper and more feral looking than their cousins. In saying that, they did have strong similarities to the traditional hunters that we are familiar with, like their use of vocal mimicry, high-tech camouflage, and plasma casters. Due to their comparative size, a lot of people consider them to be much stronger than their traditional hunters. I personally don't think we have seen them engage in enough fights to be able to truly gauge this, I mean, the only fight that we see is with the Yachua that was freed by Royce and fought the Berserker Predator in a weakened state. In Predators, we witness three Super Predators, a Tracker, Falconer, and a Berserker that appeared to be the leader of the group. Their design featured striking differences, though their technology was similar to the traditional Yachua. The Super Predators appeared to only use a single wrist blade on their gauntlets, in comparison to the two that the smaller hunters use. Their armor was also more compact and appeared to use a thinner synthetic material. I thought it was interesting to note that the falconer utilized a predator falcon to track his prey, which is a device that we haven't seen any other predator use, even in the expanded universe. I'm saying this from memory, so if anybody can recollect another Predator using this device, please let me know in the comments below. Now, the bio mask that the Super Predators wore was similar to that of the traditional Yachua's, although their masks were seen to be more advanced, with more features, like the new vision mode that allowed the Berserker Predator to detect the heartbeat of Royce that was otherwise invisible to its scanners. Unlike the Predators that we had seen up until that point, that did not kill unarmed or injured prey due to their honor code, the Super Predators did not hesitate in this regard. They were pretty ruthless in that they used a barrage of techniques coupled with their advanced technologies to demoralize their prey and make them panic. I mean, this was seen through their use of hounds, ambushes, electronic devices, and merciless offensive strategy that has been cultivated over time, hunting the most dangerous of game. One of the things that really sets them apart to the traditional hunters that travel to a game preserve, like a particular planet with a specific prey to hunt, is that the super predators were more patient. They had stalked their prey and watched them fight in their respective conflicts. Once they were satisfied that they had found the best fighter and hunter in that conflict, they abducted them along with their gear and transported them to a planet that was their designated hunting ground. Here they would stalk and hunt multiple species that were the elite hunters in their respective systems. One of my favorite film directors, Robert Rodriguez, who was also the main producer responsible for getting the project on its feet, had stated that the three super predators we had seen in the movie were outcasts from Yachua Prime that were likely hated by super predators and predators alike. This essentially means that they were likely bad bloods, which I expanded upon in my Predators Explained video, which I will leave links to below. This explains Nolan's line about there possibly being a blood feud between them. There is no way for him to know if this was true, but he probably saw the super predators fighting the smaller predators and assumed this was the case. It should also be noted that Nolan is an unstable psychopath that survived multiple cycles on the preserve by taking advantage of the scenario and the people around him. 
With that in mind, he obviously isn't the most reliable source of information. Upon re-watching the film, I also was able to see similarities between Nolan and the Super Predators in that he had no problem with killing his own kind to advance himself. I have survived. Salvaging what I can, when I can, from whatever I can. This is essentially why I feel the Super Predators are more efficient killers. They have no honor code, which means they have nothing ever holding them back. They have also likely killed multiple predators on Yachul Prime, leading to their banishment, and they have since dedicated their lives to going to extreme measures to perfect their hunt. I do this just for sport. Oh yeah, they bring in fresh meat, season after season. I mean, shit you wouldn't believe. <laughs> bring it in, and uh, hunt it and kill it in that order. What I think is the most surprising aspect and common through line of the Predator franchise, as seen in the first film Predator, its sequel Predator 2, and Predators, is that we humans, or at least the best of us, are able to take down the Predators, meaning that in a way, those specific individuals were sort of their equals. For example, Dutch beats a Predator in the original movie, Mike beats one in the sequel. In Predators, Hanto defeats the Falcon on his own. Nolan had himself said he'd killed a few, and Royce is able to defeat the Berserker with some help from Isabel. So you killed one? Oh, I killed two, maybe three. I can't remember. Though it should not be forgotten that each of these predators had likely killed dozens, if not hundreds, of prey before they met their downfall, ultimately making the predators the elite hunters in the galaxy. Well, that's all for today, folks. I hope you guys are enjoying your holidays. As always, it's been a pleasure. Niat here with Film Comics Explained. Thanks for stopping by.